So when we are looking at the strategy for provisioning infrastructure, we need to see that three things are considered. Starting from Britain, that means as we had already seen that in the Indian cities or the cities of the lower and the middle income countries, they have higher percentage share of active modes in the cities. The key is that how do we retain this existing share? This can be achieved by in providing appropriate infrastructure and developing a conducive environment such that the people do not move out of their existing modes to more motorized or mechanized modes. The second level of planning would include avoid. This would mean that we need to design cities such that the long distance trips are reduced. And if that happens, then again we encourage people to use walking and bicycling. Consider a person who needs to travel for 3 kilometers. Can we think of that person choosing walking as one of the modes? No. Therefore, distance has a lot of role to play when we talk about encouraging active mobility in the cities. The third tier of planning includes causing a shift. Causing a shift from the mechanized modes to the active modes. This will require both designing the city such that the long distance trips are reduced, but also development of a world class infrastructure and city development that encourages shorter trips. To achieve these three tiers, we need to have seven key principles in mind, which include building conducive built environment, developing connected places, provisioning continuous, safe and comfortable infrastructure and streets, and providing secure and lively environment. Such kind of planning can help in reaping direct benefits which include better safety, better mobility, and better accessibility. The core benefits shall include better personal health, reduced pollution, reduced noise pollution, and better social equity. Now, when we are planning for the active mobility, we might need to understand how development of infrastructure will help in achieving the benefits and the co-benefits. For this, we can apply scenario-based analysis that can help in understanding the potential demand for active modes and uh, how does the potential demand convert into a existing model share that can help in estimating the benefits. So they are on the x-axis I am showing you the timeline so from present which is at zero to the horizon years and on the y-axis we measure the impact. There are different methods to estimate the scenario. The first one is where we are trying to consider that nothing changes in terms of the policy and development. It is a business as usual scenario. In this scenario, no intervention is proposed. And therefore, the change uh, or the impact of the policy does not change. The second method is an explorative scenario where we understand that if in a scenario, certain things are improved or the policy is implemented, then what are its impact? It therefore helps in understanding the impact of alternative actions or inactions on identified indicators. Last is the benchmarking, where we have defined a target and then from there we start drawing backwards to identify the steps that are required to achieve the targets. So, for the scenario-based approach, First, we need to understand the existing demand. This can be done by looking at the trip length distribution in the city. That can help us in estimating what is the potential demand for walking and bicycling. Next, we need to understand the travel pattern. For this, we need to understand how different modes are used for different lengths of trips. For example, over here, we can see that more than 60% of the trips made by two-wheeler in Rajkot are shorter than 5 km. This helps us in making an estimate about the expected model shift. 
So we can, for example, consider 20% or 30% shift enabled from two wheelers to the bicycles, that are the trips that are shorter than 5 km. And this potential demand is then converted into the expected model shift for which the different benefits can be measured, which include impact on the model share, energy consumption, emissions, and safety. Now, if I am looking at particularly the impact on energy consumption and emissions, I might want to look at the SF approach. SF approach is where we have a, a travel demand, which is activity, the share, that is the uh, how different modes are used to meet the travel demand. The both of them are then combined to know as to be known as behavior. So the outputs achieved from the scenario based approach can help us in estimating what is the expected model share in the future years because of the policy intervention. And then we have the technology component. However, since bicycles and walking does not entail any kind of emissions, therefore these factors remain to be unchanged. And just by looking at the change in the model share and the activity, we can estimate the emissions. Now, I will discuss the example of Vishakapatna, where we applied the exploratory scenario based approach to estimate the impact of alternate scenarios on emissions. Vishakhapatna is a city in the southeast coast of India with a population of 1.73 million in 2011. Based on the travel behavior data collected for the city of Vishakhapatna, we found that 53% of the people walked in the city and 4% people were bicycling in the city. When we look at the trip length frequency distribution, then it helped us in knowing that 63% of the people were traveling less than 2 kilometers and 16% of the people were traveling between 2 and 5 kilometers. This graph shows the share of trips for other modes of transport that are shorter than 5 kilometers. For example, again talking about when we look at the two wheelers, then 60% of the trips uh, made by two wheelers are shorter than 5 kilometers. For the purpose of scenario estimate, we looked at three alternate scenarios. The first scenario was about first improving bus infrastructure, second scenario about improving both bus and bicycle infrastructure, and third scenario was about improving bicycle. For each of the scenario, we estimated or defined a share of trips that will be shifting to the particular modes of travel. These estimates were based on the literature review. Estimated impacts on emissions were such that if we are looking at improving bicycles, then 10% reduction in emissions is identified for the city of Vishakhapatnam. But if bicycle infrastructure is integrated with improvisation in bus services, then we can achieve up to a maximum of 15% reduction in the equivalent carbon dioxide emissions. Therefore, this analysis helped us in identifying what is the individual impact of improving bicycle infrastructure in the city, but also if the only bus infrastructure is improved versus if the bicycle infrastructure improvement is integrated with the bus service improvement, then what are the maximum benefits that that could be accrued. So, in overall, we can see that cities of the developing countries have, have higher dependency on the active mode. However, the choice of active modes in these cities depends on both income and gender, where lower income group is more dependent on walking. Same goes with respect to the females who are more dependent on walking. The given existing infrastructure is in dilapidated condition. The overall share of pedestrians and bicyclists in the risk exposure and total fatalities is also higher. Therefore, this kind of an infrastructure exposes active mode users to severe risk to fatal crashes on the road and impose on, uh, them to the un uncomfortable conditions. Implementing appropriate infrastructure 
can help achieve long term benefits which include improved safety increased active mobility share and reduced energy consumption and emissions in support of the material and the thing that we had discussed through the slides you can see over here the reading list that is suggested and one can go through them to get more details about the discussed interventions and one can also reach me out on my given email id thank you